Hello friends, welcome to UK Dreamers. I am Dr. Aman. This is Abby and today we will talk about pregnancy in the UK. You know, the uh, what to say, the biggest hurdles that you face in the UK and you know, how to cope with them, how to arrange things, buy things and overall settle in. All right, guys. So uh, the photograph that you see was my wife and my daughter, and yes, this is the second one. So what about the pregnancy in UK? Why it's this such a delicate topic? The reason uh, that what we would be discussing today is travel while being pregnant, uh, pre and post delivery tips, and the shopping tips basically. So as you can see, it's really difficult to make the videos now. <laughs> All right, let's start. So. Why uh, is this such a big, big thing? Basically, for as uh, foreign, you know, foreign graduates, as immigrants to this country, uh, there's so many things, you know, that we have to go through. And if you are like your wife is pregnant, or you as a female doctor are pregnant, then yes, it adds up to the pressure, adds up to the challenges. And today, that's what we're going to talk about, basically. So, because it's a very, very concerning and tense condition, you know, uh, leaving your parent country, coming to a land, you, you're not aware, you, you don't have family, friends, nothing is basically in your hand. So, how does this, uh, you know, uh, this can cause further delays and even change in plans. Like, for uh, example, for us, uh, when Malkit, my wife, uh, like uh, she was pregnant and, you know, we were initially planning to come in the month of July, August amid the uh, COVID pandemic. And then she had hyperemesis, which was really bad. So then we came, you know, in this dicey situation. Should we come? Should we delay? Should we just abort our plans? So you won't believe I even wrote to my trust that, you know, uh, my wife is not well. So if you kindly allow me, I would like to join in later, basically, which they agreed because, you know, here the thing normally. So uh, luckily, we still made it earlier than that. So yes, it can be very, very devastating as well. So uh, we'll just have a talk. What all do you need before you travel like from your home country? And can you travel if you're pregnant or if your wife is pregnant and you want to bring them the whole family together like I did? Okay, so the first thing is uh, if uh, the pregnancy is over 28 weeks, you need to have documents. You need to have a certificate from your gynecologist stating that you're fit to fly. Uh, ideally, try getting an ultrasound. Like for instance, if you're traveling, get it week 10 days before. It basically helps here for them to arrange things basically. Uh, and uh, if you travel before 28 weeks, ideally it shouldn't be a big uh, issue. But to be honest, when we traveled, uh, the only place we were, we were asked about the pregnancy certificate was itself in India. So uh, we flew from uh, Raipur to Chandigarh. So while our transit in Delhi, my wife, while we were just boarding the Indigo flight, we were asked that, ma'am, can you show me a pregnancy fit to fly certificate? And we were quite amazed because we were anticipating this to be asked in the international flight where it was never asked, no one bothered actually. But yes, for domestic flights, they may ask you, please keep this certificate, you know, it keeps you handy basically. Uh, okay, uh, uh, there's one more thing to add, like, uh, you know, the risk for thromboembolism in pregnancy is increased, whether to have a prophylactic dose of enoxaparin or not. See, this all depends on your gynecologist, like you, you are yourself a doctor, most of you. So uh, if you're thinking that way, you know, always consult with them. Like we did keep enoxaparin with us. Uh, we were thinking of taking aspirin, but you know, my wife said, Let, let's leave it. So it's entirely your uh, decision. So once you land in the UK, what happens? The first important thing is to get a NHS number. Uh, you can have a, a you know, uh, you can see the description. Uh, I've made a video about how to enroll for the NHS, how to register with the GP. And once you have done this, uh, balls will start to roll and uh, you will get assigned a midwife or your wife is going to get a midwife assigned. Once the midwife comes into the play, things become very, very easy. Like for us as well, once we had the midwife uh, and, you know, they exchange numbers and, you know, you have any, your wife has any small thing that she's not able to, you know, get through with it, struggling, just 
call the midwives to you mostly during the daytime nine to five and they would try to sort things out for you so like the further plan the further follow-up the ultrasound when's the pregnancy gonna happen where you're gonna get the delivery and hence and so forth so many things it really is a blessing to have a midwife in this country so before the delivery once you know your dates are approaching the term is approaching uh, the midwife would visit your house the reason for them to visit the house is to first whether you live in a safe environment the place where you live is safe safe for the mother safe for the baby and if they find that there is any concerns because you know if you are smoking if they can see signs of neglect self neglect yeah they do report it to the local authorities so most of us shouldn't be getting uh, screwed with that but yes make sure you know your place is tidy it's hygienic uh, any issues with the house just let your landlord or your letting agencies know uh, she would also recommend to get a baby cot baby clothes infant milk car seats because here like back in our country you usually uh, love to carry our children in our laps but here they don't like it so they usually want a proper baby seat which can be fixed into the car or while you go into you know the bus cabs anything so you need just carry that and you can keep it that way so uh, there is an extensive list about this you can see uh, the source like from where i've taken these i'll put the link below as well if you want to have a further read about it so the nhs has basically a checklist that you can see so uh, there is a very very decent checklist that you can see on the screen uh, so in this you know the mothers the babies and the fathers fathers are a big thing in this country yes so uh, what we took was basic phone charges and the camera as suggested i did that and for the moms and the child there's a big extensive list uh, like as as i said in the previous checklist the nhs has a very very decent checklist you can utilize this, this just for the sake of you know you don't miss anything So congratulations if you've made this far. So once the baby is delivered, depending on whether you had a normal delivery, whether you had a cesarean section, you'll be kept in the hospital. It's like normal delivery. They try to push you off within the next 24 hours. So you get discharged probably in the next 24 hours if you did not have any complications. So uh, once you come back home, as I said, the baby seat is quite recommended and once you're home you've sorted with the things usually you get a visit from the midwives second third day usually they come to see the baby if the baby is having any joint dish whether the mom is coping up well whether there's any welfare or health concerns and by this time if you're not aware the fathers get two weeks of paternity leave here in the uk you need to apply beforehand definitely with the medical resourcing but you do get the two weeks off this is a very very extensive list friends it can vary from person to person but buying the kit stuff itself is very challenging here especially in the months of winter so uh, what we did was like most of these things were recommended by a near and dear friends and so the first thing is uh, you get uh, get to boots pharmacy it's a big chain in the uk uh, get their membership and you know while you enroll for the first time you get a membership card and the vouchers and many of the thing things with these vouchers are great plus you get discounts and every time you buy something just you to utilize the card second good option was asda george you'll find asda supermarkets uh, asda has a sister concern sort of thing there's an online app to it so just download george they're good uh, clothing options good accessory options for the kids uh, diapers oh man this is expensive as well plus it's you know 
never ending <laughs> because uh, if, if the child is born in the summers you can still have some options of leaving them open but if it's raining or if it's cold you know you still get, or to get the diapers they call it pampers here uh, like every supermarket will have their own set of collections uh, the best one that we actually like is from Aldi we've tried it from all the supermarkets but you know the best one that we found was Aldi you can buy from different supermarkets wherever you find there is another big chain of supermarkets Tesco get the club card membership of Tesco and you know you get loads of discounts so for accessories I would say Tesco is really really good okay uh, you can get the membership online or you can even go to the Tesco big big centers and get them done basically Amazon for everything else just get Amazon be it your prams and everything for the prams I would say uh, many of my colleagues did buy over like 1000 1200 pounds prams uh, we didn't find it uh, you know worth investing because eventually it's gonna go off in a year's time I think we bought it for 200 300 pounds some 250 300 pounds something like this so it's up to you guys like the sky's the limit people can buy it to 2000 pounds some would just buy up to 200 pounds the other alternate option to this is Facebook market believe it or not Facebook market in the UK is you know you get everything so uh, if you want to give it a try like for the second hand stuff definitely try Facebook market you'll find everything just go in your local areas don't travel too far otherwise the cost becomes the same uh, but yes definitely Facebook market is definitely worth a try uh, the last thing I would like to add in this presentation is a maternity exemption certificate so while the mothers had the baby you contact your midwife and from the day of the delivery for the next 365 days you get a maternity exemption certificate what's the big advantage your prescriptions are absolutely free while the child's prescriptions mostly would be free for the first year after the pregnancy the delivery basically mother prescriptions are also free so if there's a genuine need for a medication for instance like uh, if your hemoglobin like your wife's hemoglobin or your hemoglobin has dropped like uh, the female uh, so the usually the GP surgery is gonna write you prescriptions but if it's genuinely needed it would be paid by the government itself for babies usually it's free the biggest hurdle I would say is dental care in the UK yes it's expensive definitely but uh, if you have just delivered for one year your dental care is absolutely free all you need is the maternal uh, maternity exemption certificate so please ask your midwife regarding this so I know it can be a big drastic change big settlement issues but you know eventually uh, it pays off well so all you need is the exact line of you know approach so as I said come to the UK get a GP get the uh, midwife midwife would sort most of the things and once you're here once you're in the system you'll definitely be more comfortable more better so that's it guys the reason I made this video is because I got a lot of mails from many of the female colleagues uh, guys who are just you know becoming fathers so uh, what my advice is even if you are pregnant you shouldn't you know stop you from coming to the UK it's, it's a big hurdle it's a big challenge but you know eventually it, it pays up well so till then if you've got any further queries just drop in the text below just mail me or drop it up in the message in the website I'll try to get back to you and if you want me to make any further videos on any specific things keep dropping me the text I will definitely try to make one so till then keep liking keep sharing keep subscribing UK Dreamers and Dr. Aman signing off thank you so much bye